Hello viewers, you're welcome. Thank you for being part of the show. We are glad you're still watching in. I'm Kanwaji Baker, a teacher for English at Kampala Parent School. I've come yet again with another dose of what we saw. We are delighted that you're watching indeed, according to the questions and the compliments that we receive. We received many and many that we sampled a few of them that are going to represent most of what you said. I gave you two letters to write, one during your free time, and another one, uh, it was just requesting that job opportunity. A few of you wrote their letters and sent them in. We are glad. The likes of Nangarama, Basa Bluk, Shena, Shina Kunihira, Deize Iranzi. Uh, all these people wrote their work and sent in for us to have a look at. But we are going to guide you on how you had to write. <coughs> and possibly you will mark yourself where need be. Um, <coughs> if I start on the package that I've brought today, it is wise that I respond to some of your queries that you have brought in. One was a video call. Good morning, teacher. My name is Jen Nandut. I want to ask you, when are you attending P4? Thank you. Nandutu, Jen, we promise you we shall reach out to that. But even then, within the content that we teach, we try, we try as much as possible to go down so you can also pick. Another one was a parent who called on behalf of his, of, of his daughter. This parent, we always advise you, please involve your learners, involve your children. We like those children to get part. Uh, thank you very much for the lessons you give to these kids of ours. Uh, I'm a parent to one of the kids here. Uh, she's in a city parent school called Milende Price. But we have an argument about using the home address. We have a post office box. It's 21742 Kampala. Uh, what's wrong with the high using the address as Mirembe Praise, P.O. Box 21742, Kampala. Is there anything wrong about that? Let me try to put it in writing. You said that uh, <coughs> her name is Praise Makula, Mirembe Praise. And you're asking on her behalf, but what is it? How, how wrong is it for her to use this as an address? Mirembe praise alone would not work as an, an, an address. Why? Remember, I told you that the address has three components. One, it has the physical address. This physical address must be showing the reader where you're writing from. That's one. So Mirembe Praise cannot be a physical address. Unless you call Mirembe Praise and you add something, maybe Lane, maybe Plotty, or you call actually from Mirembe a name, now to, Mir to Mirembe uh, a place. Or she can use Mirembe Praise and then put a plot name down here. You may find that Mirembe Praise, let's say... Um, Agava Street, P.O. Box, as, and you go on. As you said, it is two, two something. Let's say 24721. Then you say, maybe Kampala. You say Kampala. P.O. Box. Two four seven four Kampala also. It can be like this. You may make this one a street, or you may make this one additional to the name. Then it stands out to be a good address. 
Um, you may put commas or you may completely leave them out. It's not a crime. Uh, you can also use capital letters. Remember, I told you we are free to use capital letters. When you use capital letters, make them very clear, and it should all be capital letters. Um, another one is uh, my colleague, Mr. Ampiangu Victor. Mr. Ampiangu Victor is a teacher at Mugwanya Preparatory Kabodja. Yes, hello, Baker. Thank you so much for teaching. Uh, I told you, I'm the, less, to the lesson is good. We are following it here in Kavodja. Letter writing seems to be a threat to many candidates, but you have made it very simple for them. So much. And indeed, so we are grateful. I hereby, um, because the word hereby is a concluding remark. We appreciate that you have been wa you, you are watching and we are grateful for the compliments that you made. Then Kasita, Daniel, Enoch, Omara, and Victor Kong from GT Mkono Primary School all sent their work, but again they complained of the speed at which our activities get off the screen. Remember, we have told you that we, sh we are working around the clock to see that you get whatever you want. You will have enough time to copy it. But even then, please increase your speed as much as you can. We cannot wait for everyone to finish. Then another one was Aman Shafiq, still from GT Primary School, Mukono. Uh, this wrote a letter which wasn't very clear. Akankwasa Iganga, all the way from Iganga, she's uh, a student, she's in senior two. She sent her letter. We are going to talk about that. I've summarized all your queries in what I'm going to teach you. And lastly, we have an audio from Karole Peter, who was asking me. He's saying he's from Uganda Matters Secondary School, Rubaga. Uh, hi, teacher. Uh, I'm called Karole Peter Clever from Uganda Matters Primary School, Rubaga. I want to thank you for the knowledge you are giving us in this COVID-19 break from school. Uh, as you were teaching about letters, I wanted to ask you a question. As you, you were giving us the headings, the, 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 as, uh, as we are forming the subject of a letter, of a formal letter, on that word, re the one that we call reference for you you are using capital r and e but i'm entirely i'm entirely i'm entirely correct to use capital r and capital e instead of capital r and e, small e yes that's what i was asking thank you teacher, for the, for teaching us why is it not allowed to use capital letters as we are stating the reason or the subject or the reason for writing. I explain this, maybe you aren't around in the first uh, episode that we brought you, but I told you that this one makes it ambiguous. What do, what do we mean by ambiguous? Ambiguous means something that can be understood in more than one way. RE is a standard abbreviation for religious education. But RE small is not an abbreviation. I explained that last time. This is a preposition. This preposition means about. It's not a, it's not a short form for reason. It's not a short form for reference. It's not a short form for anything. It is a preposition, which can be explained in, very, in three ways that I will explain when I, began, I begin teaching you what you have to know about the general view, the overview of everything concerning letters. And then, let's get started to your queries. One is about the address. I already told you how we state the address. 
that the address is a combination of three components. One, the writer's address. This address, this writer's address must, com must have the physical address where you're writing from. It may be a school, it may be a street, it may be, uh, it may be a division, it may be a town, or anything. That's the, the, the first component. Two, we have the box number. Box number implying where you receive your letters from. And then lastly, you come to the physical, the postal location. Is it located in where? You're, so you put that one. That's one and nothing more than that, the writer's address. When it comes to the other issue that you raised too much was about the salutation. Salutation, I gave you three salutations. One, you could say, dear sir, when you are sure you are writing to a gentleman in that office. You can also say, dear madam, all followed by a comma, dear madam, when you are sure the one you're writing to is a madam. Or oh, dear sir or oh, madam, in case you don't know the one you're writing to, is she a madam or is a gentleman? So you just use this dear sir or oh, madam followed by a comma. This is one part of it. The other second part I gave you was using a name. We use a name when you're writing a semi-formal letter, meaning that you're writing a letter to someone you know of, but not so deep. That's when you say, Dear, Dear Serugo, Dear Serugo, Serugo Joseph, for example, or just Dear Joseph. That's enough, okay? If you decide, you may use two names, or you may just use one name, part of the name, sorry. And I told you our order is different from that of the, white, the whites. For them, it's the first name first, then the second name. But our order is the second name first, then lastly, the first name. You can say, dear Sergo Joseph, if you know the person. And then, you can also say, dear Ms. Ms. Somebody. When you are not aware whether she is married or not. When you are not aware of that, you use Ms. But if you know she is married, you use dear Mrs. And when you use Mrs., it is the gentleman's name. It is the gentleman's name that comes first. Dear Ms. Gentleman's name. Dear Mrs. Let's say Kalia Magua. Kalia Magua Hassan. This is all about we talked on this salutation. And I told you that the salutation comes before uh, this reason or the subject. I've seen most of you have sent in your letters, you are interchanging these things. That's why I've been, it has bothered me to bring all this information. Now when it came to stating a reason, that's where most of the troubles came in, and that's why I've been forced to give it some good time. When we are stating reasons, one, I told you, whether you're writing capital letters or small letters, this must be a capital R and this must be a small e. The reasons I explained. And I told you, you are free to state it in capital letters when you are not sure of the main words. Or you don't have the capacity to differentiate a main word from a preposition and a noun. Some of these uh, reasons you brought in, or the, the subjects that you, you brought in, had small letters on main words and capitalizing the articles. So that's why I'm saying, let's look at, when you're stating this reason, we have three ways. One, 
There are those uh, reasons or there are those subjects which can stand alone. Like you may say, the one I gave you, apology. Apology can stand alone. Whether in capital or small. Two, another one, complaint. Complaint can also stand on its on its on, on itself, and it should it may stand alone. Three, we can have condolences. The other one that can stand alone when you just write, just appreciation. Now all of these can, and many more, because I'm just giving a few of them. All of these can stand as single subjects. You can write just one word. And then that's a complete what? Subject. Two, there are those that can stand two. Like, you are inviting a school maybe to come and have a friendly debate with you. That way, you can say... Friendly debate. Friendly debate. The word friendly debate. Being small, I must stand line. Every time you write it as small letters, please make sure you underline. If you don't want to underline, make sure they are capital letters. Then, friendly match. friendly, much. Then you unlay. And even this one, you unlay. Then we can form that one which has more than two. Like request. Request for let's say Request for books. You see this word request is a main word and books is also a main word. This for has not been capitalized because it is a preposition. If you're not aware of such a trick, then make everything go capital. You will have committed no crime. So you may write you may as well write request. for books. But I told you when you use capital letters, you may not underline because by making them capital letters, you have already highlighted. It doesn't need you to underline. And then, when it comes to request for, I've used the request as a, as a noun here. This request can be used as a verb and as a noun. When we use it as a verb, we don't put for. When it is used as a verb, it doesn't carry for. And when we use it as a noun, that's when we use a for. Where do we see the difference? The difference comes on the stress. Where do we put the stress? Request, request. The request, the stress is on R, request. But when it comes to the verb, the stress is on CHU, request. And that's when we begin writing the opening line. You, can, you cannot say, I'm writing to request for books. No. That would be very wrong. There are some verbs I'm going to show you that, do, that don't need any preposition at all. One of them is request. You cannot say, I'm writing to request for markers. No, or for books. Another one is clap. Another one is demand. Another one is discuss. And the other one is uh, order. And some others. Let's stop at those. We can't some writing to request for. That's grammatically wrong. 
Secondly, you cannot tell as a teacher, you cannot tell someone that clap for, for Juko. Why? By telling them to clap for Juko, it means Juko had to clap, but for some reasons he couldn't, and then they are doing it on his behalf. Then demand. You don't demand for something, but you demand something. You demand an apology, you demand something, and then you discuss something. Not discuss about something. Because discussing is already a talk about something. The word talk about is embedded within, and then you order. You can order a drink, but you cannot order for a drink. So that's briefly what I wanted to talk about the request. Then uh, you may decide to make your reason for. And you say, um, apology for coming late. Apology for coming late. You see, this is now made up of four. You can explain, but it shouldn't be very long. Whatever you decide to use, it shouldn't be very long. That's uh, briefly what you talked about here. And uh, I've tried to answer it in that way. Remember, this information that we have seen here is taking us back to what we didn't understand. Some of the questions that you brought in had been taught. Actually, I taught that information. Maybe some of those people did not attend my class. I advise you to always attend every class. Uh, before we go to what we want to learn today, let's look at this critically. One, we have a letter that we finished writing. This is the business letter. This business letter is a summary of four paragraphs. Whenever you're writing a business letter, maybe you are, uh, uh, you are requesting a position. Like I told you, don't request a job. That one, there is someone who wrote, I, I request a job. Whenever you're requesting a position or a post, these four paragraphs must be in your letter. One, in the first paragraph, tell us why you are writing. And of course, tell us where you heard about that position opportunity. How did you learn about the opportunity and why you are writing? Two, you outline the current job. Which job are you doing currently if it is relevant to the one you want to take up? If it is different, it may not be relevant here. So you may leave it out. In the third paragraph, ensure in the second paragraph, you can talk about even your documents, how they are spam and how they are better than others, and why the company or the shop or the spam market, whatever you are applying to, may take and leave others. Three, you state why you want that job. In stating what you want that job, why you want that job, don't tell them that you want to get money and you buy something, you want to get money and eat. That's not the reason. By telling them why you want the job, please make sure that they know what you can do for them and how you, ho you, you, you hope to learn from them. Maybe you learn to get some skills, you hope to get some skills, and then what special abilities you have that can make the company or the school or whatever you're applying to be part of can be to shine. And then lastly, you give other relevant information, relevant information in line with what you are applying for. And after that, you tell them how you can be contacted in case you are through, you are chanceful and you have gone through. How can they contact you? These are the four paragraphs. Whoever wrote a letter and did not mind these four paragraphs, please, you are out of scope. Next time you write a letter of uh, a business, Please make sure you respect these four paragraphs. Why you are writing the current job, why you want the job, and how you can be contacted. Here, you give out your special abilities, and then that they can use to leave out others and take up you. Thank you very much. Um, today, as you're copying this down,
remember we promised you we are going to leave it a little so you can have enough time. So as I'm explaining this, you can be copying this for your own benefit. Today we are going a little away from the actual writing and now we are going to the comprehension part of it. The word comprehension, as we said, comes from a simple word. What is it? Who can remind us of that? Yes, Babinga. Thank you very much. He's saying that word comprehend. Comprehension comes from the verb to comprehend. And to comprehend is to analyze what has been given to you. So you can be able to decipher. You can be able to interpret what has been given to you. Remember, I told you, as we are comprehending, we have two things we must put in mind. In comprehension, we have two things we have to put in mind. One, there is always a, a textual meaning and there is always a contextual meaning. Texture is how it has been written. And context, the context in which it has been used. So we have two ways, I've told you. One, texture, the meaning. Sorry. Texture. And then contextual. Texture meaning how this word has been written as you see it there. As we go on with our work, as we continue with our work, and depending on depending uh, comprehension, we shall see different texts being written to you, and you'll see different words written in the same spelling as you see them, but actually when they are talking about something very different, as we shall see. Then we have the context. This word contextual comes from the word context. In which context has that word been used? So as you're comprehending, you don't just look at the figures and words and you think you have got it, no. But also go ahead to know how has this word been, for what reason has this word been used? So you can decipher the information, so you can interpret the information, so you can write correct answers. And then, as you're writing or answering questions about comprehension, always make sure that you read the instruction very well. Like we shall see when we count posters, notices, and adverts, this single uh, this single information that we give you, the instruction on top of a, of a very question, like we always encourage you, please read the questions, the read the instructions on top of a very set of questions given to you in English. As you know, our paper is just divided in several other, uh, other ways. So, read this and understand it. What is it telling you? One, it is telling you to read the letter below and answer the questions that follow in a full sentence. This one is telling us to answer in full sentences. What does it mean? That every answer that you write in short is automatically wrong. Unless it is just giving, stating, or outlining. As we shall see when we come to questions that have such. This letter is not new to you. We saw it. And this letter is about a girl. It's about a boy who apologized for missing an assembly. Here it goes. It is Chiotera Central Primary School, P.O. Box, Chiotera. And then the date was that. Then the person who was written to is also indicated there. We have, dear sir, so it went. It was just apology. I don't want to go into how we state. I've already explained that. I'm writing to apologize for missing the fried assembly. I was trying to complete the teacher's work 
which I had not finished in the time, in, in her time. I promise never to do it again. Once again, I apologize for my misconduct and I shall be very grateful. This word grateful is always confused with this. In later writing, we don't use this grateful, something that is very great. But we use this grateful of A. Once you use this, it is wrong. So I'll be very grateful if my apology is accepted. Finished. This was Omita Andrew and then Omita Andrew. The mistake which most of you did. They interchanged the names. They started with a capital letter and then ended with a what? With a small le with, with small letters. So this is this was a mistake. So you must also learn it from now. You come to this is the letter. This is the comprehension that we this is the piece of work that we are going to comprehend. You look at it <coughs> and you begin answering the questions. I've given you a few of them here. For reasons I'm going to tell you. But again, there are some other five or four that I will leave behind for you to answer using that very, 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 very later. So as I'm explaining here, it is wise you copy it down so it, you can use it in the, in the next activity yet to be put there. Thank you very much. First question. In which district is the writer's school found? First of all, what is this question requiring you? It is requiring you to give that position. They have told you, remember I told you that as you're writing letters, the three components that make, the last one either must be that position, it might be a position where the address is located. This time it was located in Chotera, and Chotera incidentally can be a town and at the same time a district. Just like you have Rakai a district and Rakai a town. So this one being used here requires this district. Now what is it requiring you to do? It is requiring you to, one, use the right tense. Two, answer the question as told without going anywhere. Three, mind the rule that governs the capital letter, punctuation, as we shall see. Now here, in which district is the writer's school found? What does this one require you to do? One, it requires you to mind, one, the tense, mind the tense, in which you're going to answer this question. If they ask the sentence, the question is asking past tense, please don't answer in future or in present symbol. Two, mind the punctuation. All the punctuation marks, is it a question? Then the question mark must be there. Is it a full stop? Is it a statement? Then the full stop should be there. Is it an exclamatory sentence? Then the exclamation mark must be there. This is all about punctuation. And is it requiring you to write capital letters? So you must write capital letters. And then, let's try to answer this question together. In which district is the writer's school found? Try it out. Who has got the answer? Uh-huh. I know you are just there. Can you tell us the answer, Justin? Thank you very much. Justin is saying... The writer's school is found in Chotera district. Now, the answer is right. But here comes a problem of writing it. You know, you know, comprehension is a simple thing, but a very difficult thing. You may know the answer, but you fail to write it right. Well, this is what we do here now. The first answer, as Justin has told us, he has said that the writer's school, writer's school, all of this falls under punctuation. 
the writer's school, once this misses, it means you are missing a mark. The writer's school is found in Chotera. This is follows under punctuation. That means every district must be, must be, is, a, is a proper noun. So it should start with a capital letter. Chotera district. And even this district must start with a capital D because it is following a proper noun. Once you just, just say Chotera district with a small d, then you are gone that way. Much as you knew the answer, but the answer has been cancelled because of disrespecting the punctuation. So be careful with the punctuation and then the tense. Thank you very much. Let's go to the second one. Second one, Hamza. Why did the writer write the letter? Hamza is saying the writer wrote the letter to apologize. Is he right, you think? No. Hamza is not right by saying the writer wrote the letter to apologize. It is the obvious answer, everyone who sees that. But why is Hamza a little wrong? Let's look at this very question. What is questioning? The questioning word here is a why. Why is the questioning word? So whenever we are answering questions about why, every time you are answering about questions involving why as a questioning word, in your answer, there should be any of the following. One, in order. If it is requesting a reason. In order to, so as to, so that he can. Every time we use so that, then we have the modal verb. Eh? So that he can apologize. Or such that he can apologize. Or in order order that he can apologize. For this particular question, it required any of these to be in the answer. The because, which is always next here, will be used in some other questions we shall ask you. But every time you have the why question, either you have any of these or you have because. Because, procedure, and then um, in order, reason. As we shall explain in other forms of comprehension, we shall bring you. You know, we know you are going to cover all the comprehension tactics, and I know by the time we end this COVID holiday, you'll be superb in answering these questions. Now, why was Hamza wrong, yet he had the answer? The main reason here is to apologize. Not so? It is to apologize. But why is he wrong? He is wrong because his answer missed this in order. You see how Amza would fail? Yet he knew the answer. So be careful when you are dealing with the questions involving why. Why did the writer write the letter? The writer wrote the letter in order to apologize. Such that he could apologize. Because this is the past tense, we use could instead of can. Or might. So that he could apologize, such that he could apologize, in order that he could apologize. Or in order to apologize, or so as to apologize. That's it. I hope everyone is with me. Miss this, you miss the mark. Thank you very much. Another one is according to the letter. Why did the writer miss the assembly? According to the letter, why did the writer miss the assembly? Can anyone help us? Yes, Ben? Yeah, thank you very much. Ben is telling us that according to the letter, 
the writer missed the assembly because he was trying to complete the teacher's work. It can stop here. Avoid having very long answers. He was trying to complete the teacher's work. Simple as that. Trying to complete the teacher's work. But one thing I want you to look at is this. This phrase. According to the letter. This is now called a prepositional phrase. Are we together? It is referred to as a prepositional phrase. Every time you see this prepositional phrase, make sure that it starts to avoid any other problem. I'll explain, I'll give you more light about how to use the prepositional phrase and how prepositional phrases behave. This prepositional phrase Whatever sentence has a prepositional phrase, please make sure that the prepositional phrase is seen in the answer. According to the letter, some writers, some setters put it at the end. Why did the writer miss the assembly according to the what? To the letter. Or according to the letter, why did the writer miss the assembly? To be safe, I advise you, my candidate, please start with the prepositional phrase after which you put a comma. This is what I talked about punctuation. According to the letter, the writer missed the assembly because of such and such and such and such a thing. From what you, you read. Apart from my mother, my father also takes me to school. It is very wise you start with it. That's when you can be safer. And then last, second last here, we come to, to whom was the letter written? This question is very common when it comes to letter writing. They always want that person, the receiver. To whom was this letter written? In this case, this letter was written to this big office, the chairperson. But make sure that much as these are capital letters, your answers must not be written in capital letters. Write your answers in small letters, measuring the major words, making sure that the main words like chairperson, disciplinary committee are capitalized because they are major words. And lastly, how often? How often are assemblies held at school? How often? This word often we only read three letters. Don't read often or often. It is only often. Okay? Often, not often. So how often are assemblies held at school? Assemblies, this, which, what does this question require, Mugume? What does it require you to do? She's saying the question requires someone to tell how many times, how often, how, how many times is it done? Actually, what period? Is it requiring you to give a period? How often are assemblies held at school? Not how often we have agreed about that, okay? So how often are assemblies held at school? It is required, when are they there? When? It is a question requiring the time, the period, when this comes back, the routine. Therefore, it is requiring, how are they who have seen the answer? Uh -huh, Bruhan? Yeah, Bruhan has seen the answer. He's saying that... The assemblies are held every Friday. The, uh, this question alone does not require you to bring back these other words. How often are assemblies held at school? Assemblies are held every Friday. 
or assemblies at school are held every Friday. Simple as that. Don't say assemblies at school are held every Friday often. Don't bring back the offering, please. So they are held every Friday. And you stop it at that. Everyone will mark it. And then this is how we have agreed that when we have the why questions, you must put in order, so as, or because. Some questions require to use because. Why did the teacher come late? The teacher came late because he was this and that. Why did he do it? He did this because in order to procedure. And so on you go. So now my learner, I'm going to add on some, around two questions on these ones. We are going to answer them by ourselves. And when we go back, or actually when we are, we are home, let's share this information with our brothers, our mothers, our sisters, and we come up with the right answer. I've given you all of the answers. Now what I'm waiting to see is how you have come up with the right answers as we have discussed them. I'm only going to add around two, and then we call it a day. Um, <coughs> Start copying. This is uh, the activity we shall do. By the time I finish giving you the last two questions, you must have finished that part. E, F. These are the two questions that I've added. One, why do you think it is good to apologize? These are questions we call opinion questions, a question that requires one of thinking. So I expect different answers here. Don't bring similar answers. I know you, I will know that you have discussed the answers. So you must have a different opinion. Why you should apologize? Two, who wrote the letter? Keep the tense. Avoid giving your answers in passive because that one takes you away from that. You only answer in passive when it has been asked. To whom was the letter written? This is passive. The letter was written to, because the question was asked in passive. But don't bring passive here. Who wrote the letter? Please don't say the letter was written. That will be very far away from the truth. Thank you very much for having been a wonderful class. I know we have learned something, as always. And thank you for being good children and learn as always. Uh, like always, we advise you to sanitize so you can always keep safe. This disease has come to stay for some times, we don't know, probably. But it is preventable. Like we told you, or is wash hands and we shall give you all what you have to do in our subsequent lessons. For the Muslim brothers and sisters, I wish you the best out of Ramadan. This is the time you have to help us and pray for us so that God takes away that disease where he got it. I know you can do it like you have always been doing it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To participate, send a short WhatsApp video of yourself asking the teacher a question about the topic to 0705